Ladies and gentlemen, last but not least, I would like to invite um, Ms. Alexi Glass-Kentor, Executive Director of Art Space Sydney and Curator and of the Encounter Sector of Art, Hong, of Art Basel Hong Kong to say a few words to us. Welcome, Alexi. I feel like um, we should just wait a moment for our colleagues to have their photo. Do I get to photo bomb them, do you think? <laughs> <laughs> we could jump in behind and we could hashtag it late in the day. <laughs> okay, say cheese. <laughs> Thank, let's give them a round of applause. I know that this is the end of two very long days for all of you and that it's been a tremendous commitment from the Hong Kong Art Gallery Association and everybody who's been attending this symposium. So I'll try to keep my comments as brief as I can. But a week ago, I was contacted. I was traveling and I was on my way to Hong Kong and I was contacted by Katie who said, could I speak at the end of this two day symposium to take the very important position of trying to summarize in 15 minutes why art matters. And I must say that I've had a small stroke of terror shoot through my body as I thought, you know, I've spent most of my life and the bulk of my career trying to find an answer to this question. And I realized last Sunday that I had a deadline of this Saturday at 5.29 p.m. to actually resolve once and for all in my mind why art matters. So I've endeavored to do that. I've I've tried to bring it all together and I want to try to speak to you as honestly as I can because I think you've heard a lot of ideas these past few days and, and to do you credit, I think that's important. And, you know, when Katie contacted me, the phrase that came into my mind as I hung up the phone was from Klaus Oldenburg and his 1961 artist statement, Ode to Possibilities. And, and the opening line kept jangling through my mind like a long forgotten chant. And if you haven't read this manifesto, then you should. And if you have read it, then you should read it again. And if you haven't, you should read it. And I'm just going to read you the opening because I think it's entirely relevant to the context in which we find ourselves. I am for an art that is political, erotical, mystical, that does something other than sit on its ass in a museum. I am for an art that grows up not knowing it is art at all, an art given the chance of having a starting point of zero. I am for an art that embroils itself with the everyday crap and still comes out on top. I am for an art that imitates the human, that is comic if necessary, or violent, or does whatever is necessary. I am for an art that takes its form from the lines of life itself, that twists and extends and accumulates and spits and drips and is heavy and coarse and blunt and sweet and as stupid as life itself. I am for an art. It's easy for me to stand here in front of you today and to quote a kind of medley of avant-garde artist statements from Dada through Fluxus to Guerrilla Girls to Holzer to Pussy Riot. And I thought about doing that and then I thought I won't do that. You know, there's so much fire in the belly that it's important to speak honestly. And a month before I was invited to speak to you today, I received an email asking me to write a small text for a catalogue about why art matters. And so this is a question that keeps coming back to me. And the context of this email is in my role as the curator of Art Basel for Asia for the encounter sector, I've been invited to go to Pakistan in two weeks with the Swiss United Nations to judge an art prize for the 50th anniversary of the Swiss Development Council working with development in terms of sustainability and human rights in Pakistan. And what they've done is they've put together an art prize called We the People, We the Arts, bringing together art schools in Karachi, Islamabad and Lahore. And I've been invited to go with this jewelry to meet artists at the art schools and to engage with their practice. And this is something I take seriously. And I was asked to write this text and, and like I did with you today with Oldenburg, I think the place you begin as a curator or as an audience or as a collector or as anybody interested in art is you begin with the artist. And so I called up an artist I knew, Kadim Ali, an Afghani Hazara artist who is third generation, born in Pakistan in exile from his homeland. And I said to Kadim, who I knew had gone to art school in Pakistan, what would something like this art prize have meant to him? And he said to me, art is a path towards humanity. We the people, we the arts would have meant, and he said, everything to me. He said, when I was given the opportunity to study art, and that I have been able to succeed as an artist makes me believe that anyone can do anything. Through art, Kadim said, we can value our shared humanity and improve conditions for others. 
Ali was raised in Quetta, the provincial capital of Balistan, high in the mountains of Afghan on the border of Afghanistan, and grew up in poverty with few luxuries or privileges. He had no television, no radio, no social media, no hashtags, no Facebook. He remembered listening to his grandfather sing the Shahnameh or the Book of Kings, the Persian poem of the 10th and 11th century. In the late 1990s, a visitor came to his community to see if there were young people who could attend university in the major cities, and he successfully applied for a scholarship to study art at the National College of Arts in Lahore. He remembers that a group of his relatives and neighbors, community leaders, got his father together for an intervention to obstruct his passage and to to dissuade his father from allowing Kadim to accept the scholarship. They said to his father, you grow a tree to get the fruit and you are wasting your tree. Ali explained to me that his father, to his great credit each and every day, enabled his son to go to art school. And he said to me that that first year was harrowing. He did not speak Urdu, he spoke Persian. And it was really through mentorship. And I think that is something to remember about why art matters. It is the relationships we form. It is the interpersonal that motivates the way we think through living artists and the ideas of our times. It was people like Imran Qureshi and Selina Hamishi, the teacher at the National College of Arts in Lahore, who inspired him to persevere. He combined in the beginning a traditional vernacular form of painting from the Persian era of miniature painting, which he now combines with tapestry and installation. And he is now exhibited in the Asia Pacific Triennial, the Venice Biennale, the British Museum and Documenta 13. When asking why art matters, I advocate that the proverbial tree is never wasted in any artistic endeavor. Ali intersects with both, er both areas of my professional work. Kadim has been an artist in residence at Artspace, where I'm director in Sydney, and he has been represented at Art Basel in Hong Kong. I think, you know, supporting the practices of living artists is the way that we invest in a rich cultural and historical knowledge. Art matters because we use art to critically explore the movement and migration of ideas through time. They are a preeminent discursive platform to engage with the issues surrounding concepts of development and sustainability. That is important to remember. To take one more step further, today art matters more than ever as a way of reconciling the experience of our lives with that of the larger world, a world which appears to be reverting more than ever to binaries and narrow definitions. In the politi politics of our time in which we seem to simplify and to rhetoricize the kind of value of nuance, we need things which amplify and celebrate contradiction and paradox. We live in a time of Brexits and Trumps. We live in a time of Occupy and Black Lives Matters. We also live in a time where entire communities of people are displaced through mass migration. And we have a responsibility to be accountable to understanding and having empathy towards relating to what is unfathomable in the times in which we live. And we do that because of art in many ways. Art acts as a connective thread, creating a space to comprehend difference. It resists categories, and art is an inexorable part of the ecology of the everyday. It proliferates within spaces that are both covert and overt in order to pull the thresholds and definitions of subjectivity to their outer limits. Art, at its best, resists the confines of ideology, convention, and taste, and it extends and questions worldviews. Art does not need to have a responsibility to the social good, and I don't believe art is good for society. I believe art's role is to not be good. We need to be bad, we need to be disruptive, we need to be urgent, and we need to be complicated. Art should not acquiesce to a neoliberal ideology dominating global, globalized culture, but is responsible for questioning and engaging in myriad contexts. Tim Winton, a novelist I love, recently wrote, the arts are often last on and first off in people's minds. And I think that's not just sad, it's corrosive. They're just seen as fluff, as fripperies, as indulgences, as add-ons and as luxuries. I think, and I don't think the arts are luxury. I think they are fundamental to civilization. It's just that our current dispensation, civilization is not the point. Civilization has become something that commerce has to negotiate and introduce if necessary. I work in the not-for-profit sector and I think a lot about value and why art matters because I'm seeking support for the sorts of projects that I believe matter. And I have some days an existential crisis as I try to qualify and quantify the value of what it is that I do, but it is exactly the non-material and expansive nature of art that matters most. This allows us to expand our capacities as individuals and offers an expansive way of examining our sort of cultural and social realities. It matters that art can propose alternatives and offer an expanded vocabulary. 
I firmly believe that the most political act of the 21st century is to be vulnerable, to be vulnerable to being changed, to be vulnerable to being wrong, to be vulnerable to being altered. As a curator, every encounter I have with an artwork alters me. I am changed. I don't know who I am in front of art. I only know that I will be altered. And I think that that is an important act, to let go of a kind of binary definition of subjectivity. For me, as a curator, there's an Australian phrase, keep the bastards honest. And I think that art does that for me. It's a form of mitigating my own kind of persuasions towards a default understanding of the world. I can have no assumption of what I think our reality is or what it might become. The importance of art is embedded through time. It defines our collective memory as it traces our achievements. It is a measure of growth, innovation, and imagination. So for you, why art matters? In this room these past two days, esteemed colleagues and peers, and I was thinking about them last night, and I was reading this catalogue, and there's a beautiful phrase from Emilia and Emil Ilya and Emilio Kabakov where they call them misfits, fringe dwellers and dreamers, scholars each and every one. And I felt like all my peers who'd spoken these past two days embody many of those characteristics. And I thought, as you've sat here listening to topics that have been excavated, scrutinised and explored while rethinking the terrain of why art matters, I thought I'd do something a little bit irreverent. I decided to give the copywriting in this brochure the Oldenburgian treatment and to turn this into a manifesto of my own intent. So with some degree of shame and, and a bit of chutzpah and with respect to the Hong Kong Art Gallery Association and apologies to Klaus, I call this my ode to symposium and I have absolutely worked to turn this brochure into a manifesto. Here we go. I am for an art, I am for an art symposium that talks alterity and other things, thinking about the multiplicity, multiplicitous qualities of contemporary art worlds. I am for an art plural, I am for an art of Eliot, the pleasures of love, of art and of trousers. I am for an art of Tang, he of the sirs and collectors and the entrepreneurs, an art of discussion of the what and whys of how art is social oxygen. I am for an art of engaging audiences and of the muse buy, try before you buy any ill. I am for an art of those who do not just say, but also do. I am for an art that moves, shapeshifts and shatters expectations. I am for an art of making history, an art memory bank of AAA, of writhing archives that heave and live and breathe, of a past as visceral and urgent as the present moment. I am for an art that moves forward through the rear view. I am for artists, I am for artists, I am for artists. I am for an art that cares most keenly for matters minded towards the crucial way in which artists matter. You are for artists, artists are for art. I am for an art of converging cities and meeting points. I am for an art of social and cultural accountability. I am for an art of earth pulse, of luminaires and unstoppable momentum. I am for an art where the people we meet are not just in one neighborhood, but they're in your neighborhood and yours and yours and yours. I am for an art where we take care to recognise and acknowledge our shared humanity and those who are disavowed, subjugated or displaced. I am for an art of empathy and embedded agency. I am for an art of Occupy. I am for an art of making great exhibitions, of walking and walking a mile in your shoes and of the inexorable magnificent swoon of something more. I am of, for an art of exhibitions making greatness part of our everyday. I am for an art of the hunters and collectors, collectors conversing about the realms of the explorer, the supporter, the advocate. I am for living in, out and around a home filled with art. I am for an art of conversations that juice engines, provide oil to grease the wheels and for an appetite for collecting art that is underscored by a passion to invest in risk, critical ideas and experimentation. I am for an art collector that takes no prisoners. I am for an art symposium looking to the future towards innovation of technology and then some. I am for an art-filled future in which the matter of tomorrow can be the material for today. I am for an art that ends with beginnings and begins with endings. I am for an art world of vigilance, not assumptions. I am for an art that always asks why art matters matter. Thank you. What an amazing closing speech. Thank you, thank you. Um, so thank you for joining us. I know it's very hard to ask you to sit in a symposium uh, for two days, um, but we are very thankful that you came and uh, we're very happy that you're here um, 
to be part of this symposium. So uh, I would just like to thank very quickly Asia Society Hong Kong for providing this wonderful venue to us and the Bank of China Hong Kong Private Banking for being our sponsor for three years in a row and uh, the Hong Kong Arts Development Council for being um, our sponsor as well as well as uh, many partners, supporters and friends of the Hong Kong Art Gallery Association. Um, and can we give a big round of applause to our co-president, Katie Dettilly, who put together this um, amazing symposium and puts in so much of her time in the last few months. Um, otherwise, we wouldn't have this symposium at all. And uh, we would like to thank the amazing team at the HKAGA led by Christine Chan Chiu, our general manager, and also Tammy Ma, who um, spent so much time working with us. Well, this is the end of our symposium, but this is not the end of our art week. Our, only, uh, our art week only just started. We have another 10 days of amazing events. As we um, told you, uh, we have the Gallery Walk for Charity. Please buy tickets. We have a booth there to sell tickets. We really need your support to uh, support and actually also spread the word. We will have um, Art Day at Island South and uh, on Saturday, the 5th of November. And we will have free shuttles going from uh, uh, Central to Island South um, every half an hour. And we will also have Family Art Day at Tamer Park on Sunday 6th of November, Art Lates at Soho 189 on Wednesday 9th of November, and many, many other gallery openings, performances, um, art talks, book launch, tours and events happening across the city um, in our member galleries and beyond. Thank you so much.